So in our last video, we talked about op amps, operational amplifiers, and discussed a little bit about their properties, and I promised that we were going to go over a couple of their most common configurations. So the simplest and one of the most common is called the op amp voltage follower. And if you look at this, you can see it is basically where you have one of the inputs has the actual input, and then the other input is actually connected to the output. Now, since these two inputs are always going to be driven to have the same exact voltage, that makes it so the output is the same as this input. Now, when I first heard about voltage followers, I was like, what's the point? I mean, you're basically saying you get 10 volts in, you get 10 volts out. I, I don't understand. The biggest importance with this is what it does is it takes a high impedance input and makes it a low impedance output. Now, I'll also admit that when people told me that as to what a voltage follower is for, I didn't understand that. I was like, uh, I, what? What does that mean? So what happens is sometimes you have a source, a voltage source that just cannot produce very much current. And it's modeled basically as if you have like a voltage source and then you have a very large resistor. Wow, oh, that resistor is terrible. And then you have your load right there. So if you are to have a five volt load here and then a, let's just say 10,000 ohm resistor right there and then you had a one thousand ohm resistor right there, you are not going to see five volts over this resistor right here because you have this impedance right here that is basically acting as a high impedance output. And frankly, when you're dealing with high impedance outputs, um, uh, the, the most common that I've worked with are pH sensors and thermocouples. When you're dealing with the raw output where they can barely put out any current whatsoever, it's much, much higher than 10,000. Um, much higher than 10,000 ohms. And so you need something that can make it so that very, uh, very weak voltage source is able to produce enough current to power whatever you need to do. So when you say an, a high output impedance, basically what you're saying is you can model whatever your voltage source is as having a very large resistor in series with it, which makes it so the load resistor doesn't see the voltage that you're expecting. Whereas if this is practically zero, then you can say that's a low impedance output. So taking that and then applying it here, the idea is that you take that high impedance input right here, and then this, your op amp, which can supply, you know, easily tens, hundreds of milliamps compared to something that might be able to produce only picoamps, nanoamps, microamps, very small amount of current you can actually drive something else. Because even an ADC requires at least a little bit of current for it to be able to fill up the testing capacitor and things like that. So this is where you are most likely going to see a voltage follower. An op amp in this configuration is where you have some device that has a very high impedance output and you want to change that high impedance output to a very low impedance output. So this is, the rough idea of what's going on. And it's really quite simple, um, but I'm actually going to basically model this. Uh, I've created this circuit, except for instead of using, I don't know why I put 10K, because in my circuit, it's actually gonna be 47K, and we will show this in action. So um, yeah, let's go over that circuit right now. Okay, so we have on this a very, very simple circuit, and as I just mentioned, this is a 47K resistor and this is a 10K resistor, and this is simulating a high impedance output. Now these two connections, this is actually just my multimeter that's measuring the voltage across this 1K resistor, and then this is a five volt power supply. So in this configuration, even though it's a five volt output, supposedly, I'm only measuring 104.9 or about 105 millivolts across this resistor, which is not what I want. If I'm expecting a five volt output, I want a five volt output. So what I can do is I can take the output of this high impedance output and put it into the op amp. So let's give me a second and I will rearrange this and we'll talk about the configuration of this op amp specifically. Here we have it set up in the voltage follower configuration. And this is a dual op amp. So we're only using one of the two op amps that's a part of this package. And really quick, let's go over how it is set up here physically. Uh, we have here, this is the power uh, coming in, so the positive, which is uh, currently set at 14 volts. And then this is the negative, 
um, again, just the power, so VCC based, or not VCC, ground, uh, and it's so zero volts, and those are just to power the op amp. Um, right here, you can see this is the input from the high impedance output that we're worrying about. And then if you see down here, I'm not sure how well you can see it, there is a little connector that is connecting the output, this pin right here, and the negative input, which is, or excuse me, the positive input. This is the negative input. This is the positive input. Uh, so the positive input and the output are put together, and then we have our load right here, which is connected from the load down to ground. So now we have it. So this is still acting as our 47,000 ohm high impedance output. But now, as we look at the measurement over this, uh, over this resistor, we get 5 volts, which is exactly what we would expect. And that's, that's basically it. So again, it's pretty simple. Not as simple as just connecting it, but pretty simple. And so that's, that's basically it. It's not that complicated, but there are obviously drawbacks to anything. And so this isn't a perfect scenario, and there's a couple of things that you need to take into consideration when you're using an op-amp like this. And one of the big things is that it does add complexity. You have a higher pin count. You have to buy the op-amp. You have to worry about how everything's connected, and it makes any PCB design just a little bit more complicated. Besides that, you have your real-life problems. The same things that I discussed in the previous op-amp video about operational amplifiers in general, any input here is going to struggle with slew rate. You might have that input bias where the, the voltage doesn't exactly match. And it depends on your application where if you're off by a tenth of a volt, is that a big deal? It might not be. It might be a huge deal. And so that's where you'll need to get an op amp that will fit your needs. Despite these drawbacks, despite the imperfections and any variations you're going to get by going through the op amp, almost always when you need a voltage follower, it's worth it because you can't really do it in any other way. If you have a, a pH sensor that can only source literally picoamps, you can't do anything with that in unless you have some sort of amplifier and a voltage follower may be the solution in that scenario, may not be, you may need something a little bit more precise even, but everything's going to be a trade-off and almost always when you need these, you need them and it's worth it. And the only thing is, okay, if I get this op amp, it's just going to cost more or it'll, um, yeah, usually it's just a cost thing. Frankly, the, the higher end fancier ones end up costing more. Whereas this one, this one's actually obsolete. I bought this a long time. I might've been in college when I bought this. This one, I think cost me less than a buck. It's not a big deal. But if you want something that's extremely fine, then you're going to be looking at a higher cost. But that, that's basically it. That is the simplest configuration of an op amp, the voltage follower, and it is a fantastic way to take a high output impedance and turn it into a low output impedance. And it works in a lot of different scenarios, and I think you'll be surprised at how often you'll see this circuit being needed in real life. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and we'll try and get back to you. We hope that this was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff, and we will catch you in our next op amp video. Thank <laughs> you.